Welcome to the More Than Just Mowing podcast. I'm your host, Joel Cleaver, and this is the official podcast of Jim's Mowing. If you didn't know it, it's the world's largest gardening franchise with more than 2,000 franchisees in Australia, New Zealand, and Canada. And on the podcast show, we interview franchisees, our franchisors who run the regions and manage the franchisees, and also Jim himself. So there's a lot of broad range of content, and we do encourage you, if you are researching more about Jim's Mowing, about what we do, go through those episodes. It'll give you a great sense of who we are. So without further delay, here's today's episode. Joining us today on the Jim's Mowing podcast is James Kotsis, who's a bit of a Jim's Mowing legend, being with us since 1997, which is a remarkable achievement. It's fantastic to be able to talk to someone who's been with us for so long, James. So if you want to start off with first, actually, before I keep going, we've got a core voucher, which I'm going to present to you after this, if I point the right way, which is basically two free nights at any core hotel in Australasia or anywhere around the world, a bunch of discounts of drinks and dining as well. So we'll get that to you after this as well as a little thank you um, for being a staff franchisee for so long. And I'll just first start off with James first. What were you doing prior to Jim's mowing? I was a manager for Coles, store manager, uh, grocery manager. The lifestyle was long and hard. You know, I'd go to work and it was dark. I'd come home, it was dark. So, and having a young family at the time, it wasn't a great setup. So we looked elsewhere. And what was it about Jim's mowing back then? Was there a few other options you're looking at? Or because it would have been pretty early days still for the franchise. I don't know if it would have been as much brand recognition back then as it was now. We looked at BIP. We even turned up at a place, I can't remember what they were called, but they were hiring videos outside of, uh, and so you'd have a video store basically in your car and you'd go house to house. Really? <laughs> um, and we actually had an interview lined up and then I remember we turned up and knocked on the door and there was a big sign to say that they'd shut down. <laughs> oh, wow. So there, there, was a, there was a hint there. Um, but we had an interview with, VIP, and then we had an interview with Jim's in when there was only one franchise or in WA, and um, and we got a great feel from them. So hence why we went with Jim's. What was the training like back then? I presume it obviously would have been still fairly early days. Was it over in WA? Did you come to Melbourne, or what was it like? Uh, there was nothing to do with Melbourne. This um, going to Melbourne for trading is only a recent recent invention, I think. Uh, my trading, we had. Um, a guy and he was um he worked out of the the office and he did all the training. Bert Zigerfeld was his name. And um so he showed me the you know, you did your training with him early days and then you went out for a week or two with three or four different franchisees and and did different things and you learnt thing and then after two weeks they said, Here you go, here's your round, go go for it. <laughs> <laughs> and what were those early, early like early days like James coming from the Coles? working right into what you were doing. How did you find it all? Well, I can remember my first day was, was was pretty tough. I remember coming home feeling very tired. But those early days were good. i got to say, it was a lot easier. You just got out, you made the lawn. People didn't ask too many questions. People didn't know too much about their own their own lawn and things like that. So, um, you know, now, now people tend to know a bit more. The, the TV shows are on. So, um, so the expert. Want- Everyone's an expert. Yep. Um, so back then it was just, I need my lawn mode. As long as it looks neat and tidy, I'm happy. So, uh, yeah. Yeah. I remember, um, I actually used to live in Perth. I lived in a place called Marangaroo, which was only a new suburb back in the day, which was near, um, Giraway and Alexander Heights. Now it's a bit different. And I remember we actually lived next to a Jim's Mowing franchisee. And, um, this would have been back in like 1994. 1995, we actually had a franchisee next to us and his lawn was always immaculate. And yeah, it was always one of those things where you saw the trailer, you didn't know too much about what that was all about, but you saw this Jim's Mowing trailer back in the day. So what were your early memories of the brand back in the early days over in WA? Where I am, I'm so we're about 45 minutes from Perth, uh, we're south of Perth. So where I was, it was probably only three or four of us running around, like doing, uh, doing uh, this region. Um, my early days, the the people were, were were always helpful, always there to help, and that's been the key thing with Jim's throughout throughout my time. People around you have always been willing to stop and help and things like that. And I and down here there was a lot of guys who'd been in it three and four years, so they were great help. Uh, the brand the brand name we weren't probably well as well known as as we are now. You know now you can say you're a Jim and everyone knows that means you know you're a Jim's mowing. Um, so, uh, back then, no, probably not as much. So, so getting the name out was part of the learning process too. Absolutely. 
And I was, it's always very nostalgic with people like me. I'm a bit older now, but like growing up, you do remember that image off that trailer driving around, like it's something for whatever reason, it just sticks with you. If it's the branding or the logo or just, just yeah. the service about it. I, I still have a VHS tape with the, the original Jim's mowing ads. Really? Uh, yeah. Somewhere <laughs> buried in my house. Um, so yeah, it's quite nostalgic to go back and look at that. So absolutely came in, came in, in your welcome kit. You got, you got a box with the ad and things like that. So yeah. Yeah, we actually found Jim's very first fly back the other day from 1986. I actually will show it to see if I've got it here in my drawer. Oh, uh, yeah. And he, yeah. he hasn't changed much. He's just got a bit older. <laughs> yeah, he's gone bald. That's probably the big change and struggles to grow a beard now, but um, that's really it. But um, I was going to say, though, for, for being around for so long in 25 years, why have you just, why have you stayed with Jim's bone? Because obviously a lot there's a lot of temptation you've probably got you around. You don't take leads or anything like that. So why have you stayed with Jim's bone for so long? It's become a habit. <laughs> Just the, the fact that I don't have to worry about things like advertising and that sort of thing. Um, if I want the work, you know, obviously now I'm not looking as much as I am for the work, but the work comes to me anyway. It's it's it, it's just become easier to, to be in the gym's fold. There's, there's no real reason why we keep signing on. It's just we enjoy what we do and, and being in the system, being part of a family is a big part of it. And, um, you know, in 2016, when I had to have six to eight weeks off and the Jim's family stepped up and took over my round, that's, you can't buy that as an, you can't get that as an independent. You lose customers having to have so much time off, that sort of thing. And what's your secret of being in business for so long? Like, you know, it's, it's a very small st- percentage of businesses survive past 10 years, right? It's a very low percentage. So how have you managed to stay in business for so long? Is there something you do from a customer service point of view or you just love what you do or what is it? Like I've been in retail most of my life and I call it still called Jim's Mowing Retail. Having focus on the customers, number one, has been um, our biggest thing. And I bring brought up that, you know, as as silly as it sounds, the customer is always right. There's just times when they're wrong, but you just got to accept that they're not going to change their opinion. Um, being friendly, being kind. I've been to four funerals. No, sorry, five funerals. I've been to, I've been to the six christenings i've been to three weddings through my customers so you know they become your friends as well that's the biggest focus just being kind being um being friendly being always with a smile while we've stayed in business well i've I put that all down to my wife you know the fact that i can go out there and mow the lawn and then i just bring her the paperwork and she does all that sort of thing and she's very good with customers so i think that's why we've stayed in business and it's an easy business to run there's nothing too complicated about it. You go out there, do your job, put a smile on your face. You seek out the work when you need it. Getting the work is easy. Once you get into the swing of things, finding the work, I mean, finding the work is a lot easier. And people will often say, oh, do you know anyone who can do this? And you'll go, yeah, me. And, um, you know, that's why we've stayed in business. Yeah, and it's great to hear that you're a team with, with your wife because a lot of Jim's mowing franchisees have that team element where it's a husband and wife team. Sometimes they're both out in the field or one's doing the books or running the customer service. So it's great to hear that you guys have been in business for so long together as well. That's a, that's a really great story. So with um uh, your business over the years, how have you seen the industry develop as a whole from back when maybe you first started to what it is now? How have you seen the developments in it? Lawn mowing was a thing that when I started, there was probably us and a and one VIP bloke. There was probably four or five gyms and one VIP bloke, I think, from memory. And then you'd have what we'd call the ship workers. So the blokes who'd, who'd be working, that would either be working FIFO or they'd be uh, they'd be working in, on the industries and they'd be doing, and they'd get stretches of days off and they'd throw a lawnmower in the, in the, in the back of their uh, ute and they'd go and mow a few lawns just to top up the money. Um, how That's changed now. Every street you go on, there's someone else. Um, there's a there's a different person. There's um, we've seen we've I've seen other franchisee models try and come. I mean, now we've got Fox Mowing trying to get a foothold in WA. So you see a lot of a lot. There's a lot more independence. There's a lot more blokes out there who do it because they can, I guess, and it's easy work and it's an easy business to set up and start. And what do you think about the um, 
not, not not competition element, but we see a lot of us because Jim's Boeing's the big brand. It's the flagship rider. And a lot of independents get a bit salty sometimes. We post, obviously, we do a lot of stuff on social media. I see a lot of comments all the time. And it's always independents being, you know, overly negative. So what do you think about that whole dynamic between the independents and the Boeing franchise? The thing about independents is they come and go. Um, you know, quite often you'll get a customer who'll say, well, I had this bloke for years and he's just disappeared. And that's a story. That's a common theme that these independents just disappear. You know, they choose not to go. And I think that's why they're independent. There's a few in our region that I've have been around a very long time, but again, they're focused on customers and that sort of thing. Um, as to the negativity, well, you know, I'm sure, uh, big franchises like McDonald's have the same negativity towards them too. You know, people just see a brand name and they want to, it's the old, it's tall poppy syndrome, I guess. You're absolutely right. Because there is why I ask that because we do these interviews and I've met a guy who's been a greenskeeper for a long time. Some really top quality golf courses. Another guy did a surf for and hold a culture, which was Aunt, uh, Theo Theobald's been for 27 years. And just trying to get across the point that our guys like yourself and many others have got so much industry experience with it. It's not just some bloke deciding to come and do this like you know yourself got more than 25 years in the industry like so when they when you come to someone's job you're getting like how much more experience can you get than someone like yourself and some of our other franchisees yeah yeah and and you you pick up that experience it's not just on the job learning or or learning reading things you pick up that experience through customers who actually know what they're doing you know they try to they've tried something it's worked so you go and you tell the next customer i you know I can't guarantee it, but this person's tried it. So, and then you then you pick up that experience along the way. The experience with gyms is is the biggest thing. You know, if we don't know an answer to a problem, the fact that we're only phone call away from the franchise or or, or other franchisees, it's, it's you know that's that's the biggest difference, I think. Now, over the years, what sort of services have you found yourself doing? Has there been anything that's sort of been way outside your the, the scope of what people might think Jimmy's Bowen can do, or what about some jobs? You know, you do all the basic things. I remember I had a lady, she was 85 and she was shifting from one unit to another and her um, removal loss fell through and I said, I'll come and do it for you. So she paid me what the removers were going to pay and I loaded everything up on the trailer and spent the next day and a half doing that for her because she had a lot of stuff. <laughs> so that's one of the odder jobs that I've done. Yeah, that's probably the oddest job I've done. And in your business at the moment, are you doing hedging, pruning? Are you doing the full gamut or what are you doing in your business? Yeah, everything, lawn mowing, gardening, weeding, um, hedging, pruning, gutters. Yeah, just the basic things. I do enough of the ordinary, the verde mowing in the summer and things like that. But, um, that's it. And how's the body been holding up after all this time? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> there was a reluctance when we when our last contract was to sign up. There was a well, there was a genuine reluctance to go. Well, can I see myself doing this at sixty? Because that's about when the when the next contract is due. And uh, and at the time, I thought, oh no, I can't see myself doing it. But yeah, the body's holding up pretty well. It gets a bit sore, but then it gets a bit sore because I run around the hockey field too. So uh, are you still playing? Uh, I don't play. I am playing. Ah, um, so you know, so that's tough. It's tough chasing twenty somethings around and that sort of thing. So. Um, um, yeah, so so the body's actually holding up pretty good, actually. I think the outdoor lifestyle, it's, um, you know, I always put it down to, I've never had COVID and all the time. Really? I've been around, it's oh. been in my house, I've never had COVID. So I always put that down to uh, the, the sunshine we get here in WA. Well, all that, all that vitamin D, yeah. So you umpire hockey as well. That's fantastic. Um, yes. Yeah. Um, I'm a hockey Australia umpire. I'm currently in Hobart. Yeah, so for for a tournament or something, is it all? Yeah, the national under 18s are here. I'm here looking at umpires, so um, I'm doing a bit of umpire coaching, and I'm also I'm an umpire coach with Hockey WA. So and then I umpire the occasional game here and there. So and how'd you get into that? Was it just by playing originally, and then you shifted over to it, or how'd you do it? Uh, yeah, playing, and then I did my knee. So I I did my knee quite badly, and then um. So I can now run straight lines, but I can't do change of direction. And change of direction is is all all that hockey is about. So, uh, so I decided to pick up a whistle, and yeah, it's gone from there. Uh, good on you. That's that's great to hear. And obviously, you must be extremely fit to do that, plus run your business as well. So it's obviously kept you in good stead over the years. It is. It is. You know, the business probably the business side of things now is sort of. 
I don't go out seeking. I want to work. So, um, so we're winding back a little bit, you know, um, plus with the health of my family, I've got to be home a lot more. So, um, that's probably the biggest thing about, you know, and the business, the business runs itself. It's an easy business to run. And at your peak, how big was your business? I think we had, uh, 180 customers at one stage. Wow. You know, I was working six days a week. Yeah. Long, long days, you know, seven to probably four or five. Jeez. Uh, so, so they were long days. I mean, I know there's guys out there who, who are starting crack of dawn and they're coming home when the in, in the dark. So, um, you know, and that's probably my biggest takeaway from the thing. You, you got to treasure your family time and your time at home. Uh, it was a, was a decision we made to cut back. We only do, I only work Saturdays if I really have to. And usually that's because we're going away or something like that. So now it's all about life balance and that sort of thing. So, so, so over the years, how have you, how's the life balance been? Has it been something where you've dropped your kids off from school, picked them up, or how have you worked it into your life? My kids have always been a big part. So when they were at school, I would go out to work, come home, pick them up, drive them to, to school, and then, and then sort of work around their school schedule. We homeschooled my, my youngest for most of her school life. Uh, so that was tough. Um, there were days where my wife had, had to be out, and so I'd have to have the day off, that sort of thing. So uh, like I said, being home for my kids and, you know, in and out of doctors and that sort of thing, it's been a, it's been a long ride and it's still going. And then over the years, have you been happy with the income and you've been able to jump to say much you've been making, but over the years you've been happy with the level of income that's been you've been able to generate via the business? Uh, yeah, no, level income has been really good. Always happy with that. Even in the early days when I think there was a guarantee, I don't know what it was, $500, $600 a week. Yes, it's moved a bit since then. <laughs> I, I, I don't know what it was back then. But, um, <laughs> never had a problem with that. Never needed that. Um, so the level of income is really, really good. And now we're in a position where we can know that that level, I do a lot more bigger jobs. I do a lot more things for um, clients like Brightwater. Um, so going into people's homes and doing their gardens for the elderly and that sort of thing. So, and they pay pretty good. So you can spend three hours doing that and, and you get just as much as doing five or six miles. So, you know, um, and that's easier work. So, so we tend to do a bit more of that sort of thing. So. Absolutely. Now, what what gear do you have you do you use in your business currently? Equipment. Everyone loves him knowing what the professional use. So, what sort of equipment and brands do you like using? So, my cylinder mower is a mow master. I use a Kubota and a rotary mower. Edger is a mow master. I use Honda Honda Whipper Snippers, and I use Ego Power Tools, the battery operated stuff. Um, and I found them pretty good. Yeah, have you found the yeah have you found the newer battery stuff from Ego? There's a lot of brands now doing it. So, have you found that shift? Yeah, good. I've, I've had a look at a couple of others. Um, as far as actually a lawnmower, uh, it's not practical in WA. Well, it's not practical anywhere, I don't think, unless you unless you've got to try to kit it up to charge batteries all the time. But for power tools, that sort of thing, they're excellent. Um, you know, you know, it's less petrol you're spending, less on maintenance and that sort of thing. So, yeah, very good. Now, it's good to hear, you know, the Ego is, is good stuff. We, obviously, we try and, they try and throw a lot of electric stuff at us. All these brands are popping up. There's Makita. There's a bunk called Palenque, which lasts all day in a battery. There's a heap of them now, so that's definitely... Yeah. But the batteries, yeah. the, as you said, the battery's the problem. The, there's only one company you can do one which lasts one day, and that's the Palenque, but it's a big battery and it's expensive. Whereas yeah. anything else, you need multiple, and you have to have the trailer kit of solar panels or... They've got yeah. these fancy chargers now, like in little esky sort of things, which you can do. There's all these different things. Yeah, I mean, I... You know, even for me, I've still got to carry, if I'm doing a full day of um, using garden tools, I've still got to carry four or five batteries with me mm-hmm. just to, as backup. Um, yeah, it's still, it's not, like I said, it's not practical to use for a push mower, but um, for a power tool, yeah, it's, it's good. And now, have you done any splits over the years or with your customers or have you have you just kept them all? Or... Oh, no. I'm not, I'm a terrible franchise, though. Franchise <laughs> <laughs> Uh, no, I never done a split, never sold off part of my round. No. Nothing wrong with that. That's up to that's up to everyone's different. Everyone's different, so there's nothing wrong with that at all. I still have still part of my territory that's vacant land. So really I'm quite lucky. Yes. Well wow. all this day and age is there's vacant land. Well so. and, <laughs> and what's your longest service? Do you have do you have customers which have been with you for more than, you know, ten years or how long have some of your customers been with you for? So I have one gentleman who's been with me since 
probably three weeks after I started. So really, gee, yeah. funny. Uh, and I had another one. Um, sadly, she passed away last year. So she, I actually got her as part of um, someone sold off clients when I first started. So I took her on. Um, the lovely lady had lots of stories. Escaped from uh, Nazi Germany with her family. So you know, it's quite humbling to hear her story. And sadly, she passed away. And uh, it's quite an honour to to actually mow her lawn. So, yeah, but but it's a testament to you as well with regarding what you do, because more than twenty five years with anyone to say with, you know, the service providers just amazing. So they must. I've had another guy I've spoken to called Ken Swithenbank, who's been with us for fourteen years, and he's had customers still with him from fourteen years ago. So to have customers yeah. from twenty five years plus is just amazing. But on your achievement, yeah. Um, and the guy that I do, I still do now. I don't see him as much, but, um, you know, we became friends over the time. So, you know, not that we, not, not sort of friends to go and, um, have a beer with, but, um, you know, always there for a chat when he's home and that sort of thing. And, um, always ask about family. So, and that's the, again, biggest thing, getting to know your customers and getting to know their family is, is a way to keep in, keep in touch and keep, keep them loyal. That's fantastic to hear. Now, in regards to, Someone looking at maybe doing a Jim's Mowing franchise, what sort of advice would you tell them from, from so many years of experience? Learn the word no. There, there, there is plenty of times where you'll happily take the work, take the work, take the work, but then you get to the jobs and you go, oh, I regret saying yes to this one and that sort of thing. Just take it as it comes. Always be, always be happy and, and do the best job you can, no matter what you think of no matter how big that job is, always try and do the best you can. And maybe what's some extra advice then for, so let's say some of your franchisees, we've obviously got training next week here. So maybe for newer, newer guys in the industry or just starting up, what, what's your best advice for them as well? Be happy in your home life because a happy home life is you take that on to the, take that out on the road. So um, that's from my best, best advice. Don't take your problems that are there at home out, out with you on the work, on the work site. That's no, good stuff. Well, thank you very much for your time, James, and joining us from your tournament. And good luck with your tournament, well. tournament as well. It's great to thank meet you. someone like yourself who's been with us for so long. It's a it's a fantastic achievement. And um, I'm pumping you and a few guys up. It's a gym, obviously. Jim, obviously, hopefully you probably had a few things to deal with him over the years. But um, yeah, no, when I tell him, it's a big smile on his face in the office about having people like yourself. And there's a few others that we spoke to who's been around for so long with customers for more than 25 years. It's just an amazing achievement. So well done on everything you've done. All right. Thank you. Thanks, All mate. Right. And I'll give you, sorry, just before, and I'll give you that mm-hmm. as well in an email. You get an email to create an account, create okay. the account online, and you'll get a card sent to you in the mail, and you can use two free nights at any or call a hotel around the place. All right. Thank Good you, luck with your Thank you very much. Thank See you. Ya. Thank you for listening to the episode of the More Than Just Mowing podcast by Jim's Mowing. If you do need help with your local gardening expert, please give us a call at 131 546 for Australia, 0800 454 654 for New Zealand or head to jimsmowing.com.au or jimsmowing.co.nz. If you liked what you heard, please make sure to leave us a review as well. Wherever you consume your podcast, we appreciate your support. And until next episode, we hope you have a great week.